welcome to the third episode in this build. In this uh, episode I fit the electrical motor, controller, junction box, instrumental panel, gas pedal, brake pedal and steering. I make a short summary at time below and uh, I will not play any music about any chickens. So enjoy! As you can see I will put the motor here in the center of the frame and uh, also as low as possible because I want to keep the center of gravity as low as I can. Uh, I will uh, make a plate here, bracket adjustable so I can tension the chain. Here you can see the, the part from uh, the drive I used before. It's a second uh, Second variator, I think it's called. I don't know, sure. And uh, what I will do in here, you have this uh, spline shaft. So I will uh, cut with the grinder and then I will uh, make this uh, put, to put on this sprocket into this uh, piece of, uh, of uh, tube with these splines inside. So there, then I can make this. Uh, chain transmission. Well, now I've done the cutting with the grinder and also drilled some holes. And uh, as I want to have this adjustable, I uh, will try to mill these uh, holes for the motor mount uh, oval. So I will try that. I never done it before. I managed to uh, mill some oval holes. I'm quite happy with that. You can see how I do the adjustments. And uh, the adjustment is about 20 millimeters. Uh, wouldn't be any problem with the chain. Now I will uh, cut here to make it fit on the frame, and also do some uh, grinding here because of the the bolt for the motor. Mounting plate is finished. Now I'm gonna bolt this uh, motor energy plate, who fits the motor, onto this uh, mounting plate. Uh, and then I'm going to attack it to the, the chassis and uh, as I bolt it, it also would not bend, hopefully. I will also make some reinforcements here so I can uh, make it more steady. And this is 3mm plate. Yes, now I do the welding without camera. Well, now we do the test fitting of the motor and see if this bracket was okay. I hope so. Well, it seems to be working. <coughs> Show you a bit closer.
there we have the motor in position and uh, you can also see uh, this is uh, <coughs> not the sprocket I will use I will go on half inch chain it's lighter so you can see it shouldn't be in a problem to get it aligned with the with the shaft from the gearbox Yes, now I'm going to do some uh, reinforcements between here and also make some flanges, flanges between here and then it's, uh, the motor is okay. Now the motor is uh, in position and it's also just so I can tension the chain. And I've also done some uh, cutting here on the clutch. Second uh, variator, yes. And uh, I got this piece left, and I will machine this part, the spines part, down to 30 millimeters. Then uh, my sprocket fit, and then I also have other sprockets if I want to change gearings. And if it's just like like that, and then I put the sprocket here, and I will change this one to the same size. This is size uh, 428. Well, now I fitted the controller and it was quite easy compared to other things. It was just uh, four, four brackets and then it was to put it in place. I uh, connected the, the wires that were used on the electric cross cart and they fitted. That was nice. Now I have another problem where to put the, the junction box. Well, my, my original plan was to put it uh, on top of the controller here, but it, it doesn't fit. It, it's too wide, the box. Then uh, my second thought was to put it like this, and I think it's quite good. Uh, the problem is uh, how to make the bracket in a nice way. Uh, now I am trying maybe to put it like this. And it's quite easy to make a bracket on there and a plate, and then I can put a plate on this another this uh, structure where the gear lever is. And uh, then I can also access the battery in a better way. And I also it's quite easy to um, take up the cover and uh, do some uh, connecting and whatever. But I have to put the seat in and see how much room there is for my feet. So that's what I do. Well, there's no problem with the uh, foot space. Uh, but I think I, I, I must make some brackets so I can fit it like this. It looks more, much nicer. And it's uh, still easy to access the, uh, the box from, from the front. Finally, I decided uh, where to put this uh, junction box, and I also made uh, the first uh, bracket. And uh, this is uh, I can put this onto the gear lever, so I can easily remove it uh, if I want access to the if I want access to the battery or something. And. Uh, I also, uh, when I put the controller in place, I found out that I need some kind of protection over the controller. So I probably put the key switch and uh, the forward switch on that plate. And then uh, I have uh, all the switches and uh, things that I need for the control of the motor. Then I probably also will put the and uh, will put an DC DC converter onto this uh, vehicle also because if I want to drive the winch I need uh, some extra power and also to charge the auxiliary battery. But I will put a, a, a connection there also so I can charge the auxiliary battery with uh, some kind of battery charger. Now I will make uh, the second. Uh, bracket for this junction box and then I start with the cover for the controller. Yes, here you can see the, the switches and the collimator. 
on the left hand side and uh, switch and uh, yeah and uh, I will do the wiring with some uh, protection underneath here and uh, you can see the junction box I'll probably put something here also to protect the controller and the wiring underneath yes and I don't think I will do that much on this electrical because uh, I'm still waiting for snow to come so I would not put the battery in place it sits on the electric snow bike but I will start on this uh, steering column the geared one well now I'm gonna fit this uh, geared steering column and this is a quite good thing because this is geared 2 to 1 and uh, original this ATV had a steering rod and you're quite strong when you turn and uh, as I put on this a little smaller steering wheel it would be quite um, tough to steer but now I have this uh, 2 to 1 I don't need an electric power steering and I think the, the steering will be quite nice because uh, you can see here I turn 2 to 1 and uh, I'm gonna fit that directly to the steering column here like that and then uh, cut this rod from the steering wheel and then uh, make an adapter to put it directly to this yes now I fitted the steering column and now I'm gonna make some brackets here and also I'm gonna extend the, the axle from the from the steering wheel Well, now I uh, cut the, the joint we set on the steering uh, column from the trackster and I tacked, uh, welded uh, the joint I got with the <coughs> geared steering column from uh, this company and uh, I uh, used the pipe who was original steering column from the steering control and uh, now I t welded it here and also uh, the inside diameter here, 60 millimeter. And I was lucky, it was the same on this uh, axle from the trackster steering. And now I'm just gonna weld it together, see if it works. steering column is finished and uh, I must say this is going to give you some inspiring racing. <laughs> As you can see I have, uh, have the gas pedal in position. I made a new flooring because uh, maybe it's going to blow some cold wind here and uh, it's also some protection from dirt. So I uh, 
made a new floor rate and then uh, I can fit the gas pedal. Otherwise I have to make some kind of steel bracket and this was the easiest way. Maybe I will put some uh, thing between here to get it a bit higher up and then I can change the angle on the gas pedal because it's, uh, it's some resistance when you push with your shoes. And now I'm gonna fit the brakes. I found this, uh, it's from an old Volvo. And you can see there's a switch here. And I'm gonna use that for the regeneration braking on, in the controller and also from motor. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that one. Um, I have to make a new bracket for it. And then I will put this pedal somewhere around here. And then I maybe shorten it a bit to make it fit. I have two uh, brackets here, I'm going to weld, and then I will use uh, the same master cylinder that sits on the, uh, on the steering rod. I will make that a bit different, because then I know the, that the volumes from uh, the calipers and everything works. So that's what I will do now. Short summary. Here you can see how I fitted the motor. Uh, it's uh, this ME1304. I have uh, adjustable brackets, 20 millimeters, so I can tighten this chain. This is the chain I tend to have. It's the 420 chain. Uh, I put the auxiliary battery underneath the junction box. It will be sitting here. In there I have the main relay. There you can see the controller mounted to the chassis and on top of that a small instrumental panel. And it's a coolometer to check the battery status. It switches for lights and a cooling pump, forward switch and ignition switch. And here you can see I fit the gas pedal. I uh, changed this flooring because uh, I didn't have to make any special bracket for the gas pedal. Uh, I fitted the brake panel and I reused the brake container, they already in all Uh I fitted the steering and to extend the, the axle coming from this dragster, kind of dragster set up and uh, down there you can see the geared 2 to 1 steering column little small little smooth nice thing 2 to 1 yeah like that now i will tear everything apart change uh, bushings uh, bearings uh, joints i will paint it and put it all together and make it work. Hopefully in the next episode you will also see me test running. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and uh, you got some inspiration to start your own project and until next time bye bye!